So the source that where the Mount Franklin's office is, is one Collins Street. And we went out and we leased a seven floor building. Whatever you see in white over here is the real world. And whatever you see over here in yellow is the OSI world. So at the seventh floor of this building is where I, the CEO of Mount Franklin sit. The job of a CEO in the real world is to interact with customers and interact within his own company. These guys make laws and rules that are abided by these, uh, by abided by the company's uh, management and company employees. Application layer, on the other hand, is a link between applications and the network. It will allow the applications to use the network exactly the job of a CEO, isn't it? So if you want to use Google Chrome, if you want to use Real Player, you that is an application and it must use the network that you have created underneath it. Imagine at this stage, uh, one of the customer calls us up and they put an order for 50 liters of mineral water. At the sixth floor of this building is where my secretary sits. Now, this, the job of a secretary in real world is that of a facilitator. She should know translation. So if a customer calls in Japanese, she should know how to translate that. Or if a letter arrives in Chinese, she should know how to translate it. She should know how to secure documents. So she would be stamping the confidential stamp on the letters when they are sent out or when they are brought in. And she should know shorthand as well. So these are common things that um, uh, common traits that a secretary should have. Look at the presentation layer. It should be able to translate data into commonly used formats. It is that layer that defines encryption and compression. So have you used Google Chrome and visited Facebook.com or Internet Explorer and visited Facebook.com or done the same thing on Firefox? You will find that the logo of uh, Facebook.com and all those uh, backgrounds and everything looks the same because you've got these commonly used formats like JPEG, like MPEG, like AVI, like GIF. So because these have been standardized, you don't have to constantly keep on recreating them. So that's the reason, that's where your presentation comes in. It translates start into commonly used formats. And at the fifth floor of this building is where the account manager at of Mount Franklin sits. Now jo the job of an account manager is to engage and disengage the customers. When there's work to be done, when there's business to be done, the account manager will engage the customer. And once the work is done, then they'll move on to do other things. Similarly, your session layer will do the same thing on your PC. Sometimes you might be on the on the internet on your computer and you would have opened up real player, you would have opened up Facebook.com, you'd be downloading a file. And which layer is doing all that? Which layer is making sure that your sessions are started, stopped, paused, and ended uh, in um, in the right manner? That is your session layer. So it's the job of a session layer to manage your application sessions. What I want to talk about now is I have gone through three of the top layers of OSI reference model, layers five, six, and seven. What about this 50 liters of mineral water? What have I done to deliver it to the customer? Nothing. That's the reason why we were saying earlier that we at CVT Anytime like to think of these layers as executive layers. All right, it's not that we don't think executives don't do a lot of work. They do, but uh, in regards to actually carrying this, uh, carrying this water from the source to the destination, they've got not a major role to play. Now let's talk about the fourth floor, the customer care department. Before I talk about the customer care department, I want to give you an example. The first thing that the customer care layer Will ask the customer. Will ask the customer is whether you want insurance or you don't want insurance. If the customer decides to use insurance, then their job is to make sure that the goods are sent without problems in the correct order. I'll leave it over here, and I'll now give you an example. About three years ago, I was flying to Dubai, and. In Qantas, you can carry 20 kgs of checked baggage with you. So here I am at the counter. I was traveling uh, business class, so I could carry 40 kgs with me. So here I was at the check-in at the check-in counter with a 40 kg bag, and um, I was asked to put it on the weighing scale. I did, and she, I was told that uh, that's 40 kgs, and I said, "Yeah, I know I'm allowed to carry 40 kgs." She said, "No, sir, you are allowed to carry two 20 kg bags." 
And I said, what do you mean? 20 and 20 is 40. So why don't you let me um, carry it through? And she said, you don't understand. This is the front end of the process. Later down the track, the, the baggage handlers have to actually pick up the bag and put it in. And she told me that about 30 years ago, someone bought in a 55 kg bag. As the baggage handler picked it up, he did his bag and Qantas made a rule. The rule is that every bag must be 20 kgs. She further went on to tell me that if I was traveling first class, I was allowed to carry three 20 kgs bags. But that didn't mean that I could then have a bag that weighed 60 kgs. I had to have three 20 kg bags. So similarly, I've got 50 liters of mineral water sent, but over here, someone actually has to carry that 50 liters of mineral water. And those guys made a rule. They said that every, we will carry as much as you want, but every water bottle must be five liters when you send it to us. So we cannot send 50 liters as it is. So look at what we ended up doing. We had to divide that 50 liters into 10 liters of into 10 bottles of 5 liters. Now we have marked each water bottle as well for reassembly. All right. And finally, because the customer has decided to take insurance, they need to confirm when they get it. So it is our job to make sure that they get all the water bottles, but it is the customer's responsibility to confirm that they have got the water bottle as they get it. All right. And moving back to my example, when I was coming out of Dubai, they put the sticker on my back that said screened at Dubai, DXP. So why did they put this sticker on my bag, screened at Dubai? What do you think? The reason they put this sticker was because wherever it went throughout the world or at all their major airports, they knew that the bag had already been screened. So they don't have to keep on screening it over and over again. Similarly, this water bottle has gone through the customer care department. Look at what they've done. They have stamped it with this red. That tells every way this water bottle goes that it has been sent by the customer care department. So once again, to reiterate, because this is one of the most important layers, if the customer decides to take insurance, then we mark each water bottle as well for reassembly. And if the customer decides not to take insurance, then we don't, we don't put any uh, markings on it and finally if the customer decides to take insurance they have to confirm they have to acknowledge when they get it let's talk about the transport layer now the transport layer's job is to do error recovery so if there's a problem with this water bottle not getting to the destination we have to then recover the error segmentation can you give me an example of segmentation that we've done absolutely 50 liters now divided into 10 bottles of 5 liters. And of course, if you're going to segment it here at the destination end, you will have to reassemble and it will provide you acknowledge as well, acknowledgement as well. Please understand that if you decide not to take insurance, then you do not need acknowledgement. Then you don't need to mark each water bottle for assembly as well. So here I've got 10 water bottles that we created at the third floor of, the, of uh, Mount Franklin is the addressing department. Now, addressing department will first confirm whether the address, the destination address is valid or not. Imagine if someone tells me that I live on 123 ABC Street on the moon. I immediately know that that's, that's not right. You can't live on the moon. All right. So the first thing that these addressing department confirms is whether the address that you're going to is valid or not. And once it validates that the address is valid, then it, will find, it finds out whether it can find it in the malways, it, whether it, the, it knows how to get there via the GPS or something like that. And then it maps the trip as well. So it knows which turns it needs to take to get there. Look at that. It then puts its own stamp there as well. So this customer care stamp has gone in and then you've got an outer uh, stamp over here. That's this addressing department. Of course, we understand that the first water bottle is made way through, the second will come, the third will come, so on and so forth. And over here, we have put that this is sent to uh, 223 King Street. Let's talk about your network layer. Network layer in your OSR reference model does IP addressing. So in the, all the addresses that within IP within TCP IP are defined by the network layer. And how to get to those addresses is also defined there. I would, if I was, uh, I would suggest you at this stage, if you want to, you can write down that IP addresses live here. IP addresses live at layer three. IP addresses live at ne the network layer. So throughout 
uh, the course if we ever talk about a device that works with IP addresses you would immediately know that that's a layer 3 or a network layer device now down to layer 2 layer 2 is the dispatch department the dispatch department is responsible for the delivery of the goods and they are also responsible for the delivery department you've got a delivery department over here and the dispatch department looks after that department remember the law you might say which law the law of five liters every water bottle must be five liters in volume so it is actually layer two that made that law and that was applied over here similarly when i was giving with the example of the uh, of the check package the law was made by the baggage handlers at the back but it was applied at the check-in counter at the front end similar to this so these guys will pack the goods to be sent all right how much what's the volume do you reckon on that five liters isn't it but these guys don't trust anyone so these guys actually check that volume and then put that five liters put that volume on this again and then they put this header that everyone does and then they've put this trailer at the back as well that says that the volume of this thing is five liters it says wait but consider it as volume for the timing and let's now look at your data link layer it packs the data to be sent puts on the crc cyclic redundancy check remember now this five liter stamp at the end wasn't put by anyone but it's only put by layer two all right so this is known as crc cyclic redundancy check i'll talk about this in a in a moment and these guys are in charge of media access the actual uh, different media that you've got over here something to write again mac addresses live at layer 2 so throughout the course wherever we talk about a device that works with mac addresses you should immediately know that that's a layer 2 device now reiterating it once again because this is one of the most important topics this is one of the most important concepts that the layer 2 has put the header like everyone but it's also put this trailer at the back and this trailer is actually saying that this water bottle is 5 liters we know that it is 5 liters 